Welcome to Spa Francochon for the fourth round of the Michelin Le Mans Cup 2024. Father is 53, the son 21. Their shared passion, motorsport. Dutch duo Mark and Max van der Snell are the only father-son combination in this year's Michelin Le Mans Cup. Looking at, uh, at the television, following uh, all sorts of championships, um, I had always the urge to do something in, in motorsport, racing myself. Uh, in 2002, I sold my first company. I bought a Porsche, did some club racing. I think one of my first, but that's more memory from seeing it, hearing it, and pictures is uh, visiting at Sanford when you were still yeah. with, the, with the Porsche, when I was not even a year old. I guess when he was about five years old, I put Max in a kart, and I didn't do any racing until 2012. I guess the karting was a little bit too intense. I wasn't yeah, old enough, mature enough yet to really do it seriously. It wasn't yet for me that I knew that I wanted to make that uh, my future. Uh, so we did a lot of a lot of other stuff like uh, kiting and uh, mountain biking and yeah. uh, lots of other fun stuff. I think the way that I got back into motorsports was uh, mostly through sim racing with with friends just for fun in the evening. Uh, we did a lot of driving. Yeah, 17. I got my uh, my racing license again, and then. Uh, we started racing again together as well. Funny point is that in earlier days with me karting, it was that Mark was coaching me. And then now, because all my karting experience and because I'm uh, the, the silver driver faster in the car, now it's the other way around and I'm coaching him. As well as being a racing driver, Max van der Snell also studies motorsport engineering at the National Motorsport Academy in Nottingham. Being able to understand the car and actually know from an engineering point of view, besides from just a driving view, what uh, setup changes uh, do in, in theory, uh, can help you as a driver tremendously. Uh, of course, it also gives multiple career opportunities uh, as an engineer as well. The day before the race, teams and drivers were invited to Michelin's Road to Stars, a barbecue sampling with a Michelin starred chef. C'est une expérience euh, inédite. C'est un barbecue en fait euh, avec quatre types de barbecues différents. On va du barbecue euh, des États-Unis jusqu'au barbecue du Japon, avec autant euh, du homard que de l'anguille, des côtes de bœuf, des côtes de veau, crevettes grises et pieds de cochon, euh, une tartelette au thon. Et en plus, on a la vue derrière, en haut du rédillon. They've had a brilliant start to the season with two wins and then two podiums at Road to Le Mans. Let's hear from the drivers of AF Corsa, car number 51. The competition is very good. Um, minimizing errors has been uh, very helpful to us. Uh, I, right now we do have uh, a fairly comfortable lead in the championship, but we've been relatively clean and uh, minimal errors, which has contributed a lot to that. We are very happy to be here, part of the Michelin Man Cup. 51 is a special number for Ferrari and of course, uh, but of course, you know, I've been uh, staying uh, and racing with Matt and coaching him. It's been pretty incredible to see Matt adjusting so quick with very little experience uh, for sports car racing. It did take me quite a bit of time to adapt to the more European driving style. Um, I, last year, spending a bit of time uh, discovering European tracks helped me um, adjust to that learning curve a bit. Um, and throughout the season, uh, the team has been great and we've tested uh, at many of the tracks I haven't been to, which has been a huge help. He likes to work really hard with the data and video and that's, you know, it's, it's very nice to work with, uh, with uh, when you have sharing the car with someone that has that kind of attitude.
almost ready to go, but one extra formation lap for all the drivers. Quite a lot of oil left in ELMS qualifying, and this gives them a chance to see exactly where it is before the race gets underway. And the drivers will also use this valuable extra time to warm their tyres and brakes before the start. Ready to go racing in Spa, Fabian Mikkel leads the field round alongside him Tony Wells, behind Johan Sarkisian for CD and Alden Goodmanson for Thorpe. Red lights on, a long hold and away we go, we are racing in Spa Francorchamps. Round four of the 2024 Le Mans Cup gets underway, they're four wide but it is the pole sitter, Fabian Mikkel contact, was that the CD Sport car behind it was? And he hit Tony Wells, car number seven, just about to escape the gravel, but gets it, I think, by a Ferrari. It's carnage. The RHGP car is there, and there is car number seven, Tony Wells and Fabian Mikkel. We just saw the reaction from the M Racing garage, and it's M Racing's Romano Ricci who leads the race, started seven on the grid. Safety car is out. Race organisers are going to need to tidy up the first corner and I wonder whether our front row starters will even make it into the race. Well, the two front row cars make a good start, but those behind are quicker. Look at the red and yellow CD Sport car. Shahan Sakisian just being a little over ambitious, tags the RSGP car into a spin. That takes Tony Wells out. Leader to slow down to 80, please. Leader to slow down to 80. What you're getting from the reverse angle, how everything opens up for the M Racing car. Not their fault, but they've inherited the lead. And Tony Wells, contact with that Ferrari. Shahan Sakisian on row two, down the inside, just a little too ambitious. Reminder, safety car by the pits, safety car by the pits. All cars to follow the safety car in the pit lane. Back to green flag racing and rushing away at the restart, our race leader, car number 13, not unlucky for Romano Ricci from 7th on the grid. Behind him, Julien Lemoyne and Christophe Lapierre looking to go wide around the outside at La Source. That's a good clean move, left himself enough room to survive and he is through into second place. Julien Lemoyne in third in that blue ANS Motorsport machine. But the race leader, Romano Ricci, already out of a rouge, climbing Radion as they head in, in second and third. Looks like a challenge shaping up here for sixth place. Top of the shot, Breton Racing and MV2S. Terence Woodward pulling out of the slipstream. Trying to come up the inside of Ben Stone. And through he goes. Nice classic move at Lecom. And the MV2S racing driver clearly got a very good run through Eau Rouge and up Réguillon to make that move on the Kemmel straight. You need that slingshot coming up the big steep hill and he made the best of that. Battle for fourth place, black and red cars Mark van der Snell from More Motorsport with Paraguayan driver Oscar Bittar in the Team Virage car right behind him. And there is our GT3 leader, really good start for Stella Motorsport in the Audi. Andrew Bentley in front of the field, he too avoided that first corner carnage that split the field. They qualified on pole. It's a brand new lineup for the team this weekend. Andrew Bentley, and he's been joined by James Walker, who hasn't raced here at Spa for over a decade. In fact, James Walker hasn't raced competitively for nearly 10 seasons. Here's our GT3 leaders. Matt Kurczewski right behind in the 51A of Corsa Ferrari. Those were the front row starters in the class. Oh, and trouble. That's one of the Team Virage cars and he's been hit. Georgios Kolovos in car number 44. And I think actually that's Stella Motorsports P3 car, Josh Cagill. The yellow flags will be out, all a little bit too late. There's the spun car, lots of cars feeding through. And it was Stella's Josh Cagill who couldn't avoid contact. There is the Stella Audi leading in GT3, but their P3 car 
have taken a big hit. Here's our race leader, Romana Ricci for M Racing. Christophe Lapierre in second, still racing Spirit of Le Mans about two seconds back. Julien Lemoyer, ANS Motorsport, about a second and a half behind him. But Oscar Bitter, barely a car length behind Mark van der Snell. Their battle for fourth place continues. Van der Snell starting. Max will do the second part of the race. And Oscar Bitter still trying to find a way by. Not happening yet. Out of Radion and they're passing Georgios Kolovos in the damaged Team Virage car. Oscar Bitter still trying to find a way by. He's got a good run here though. Trying to go the long way round. Mark van der Snell. Van der Snell with the inside line but tucks in behind. The overlap completed. Oscar Bitter moves up the order. Josh Cagill in the pits at Stella but it looks like they are out. Top three here, Celia Martin for the Iron Games in third place. Matt Kutzerzewski in second, still all over the back of Andrew Bentley's Audi. But the Ferrari driver can't find a way through. Rides wide over the kerbs, that's going to cost him a little bit of traction. He's looking at the inside line down into La Source, but has to cut back behind. There's no overlap. Andrew Bentley's Audi leads and the Iron Dames Lamborghini looks threatening right behind. These are our top three qualifiers and they all managed to escape the first corner carnage. Sweeping down the hill into a rouge, starting to climb up through Redion and onto the long, steep Kemmel Strait. Replay here at the bus stop, Alden Goodmanson. He's in the team Thor car, collected there by Stefan Aust, Rinaldi Racing. Romano Ricci building a lead now, nearly five seconds. And he is the fastest man in LMP3. Celia Martin for the Iron Dames, quickest in GT3. More action at the bus stop. This is the battle for ninth. Peter de Curtins in the Hegley by T2 racing car and contact as Jacek Zielonska of MV2S tries to go outside, inside, outside. Cuts back to the inside, which becomes the outside, and a little touch. Challenge for second in GT3. Celia Martin in the Iron Dames Lamborghini had just got ahead of Matt Kuczewski, and he goes back in front in the Ferrari, back up to second spot as they dive into a rouge. And this battle is just helping Andrew Bentley and the Stella Audi creep away in the lead of the race. Now has the Lamborghini got a good run out of Eau Rouge. It looks like she's in the toe. She's closing. Matt Kutzewski closing on the Audi as well. Up to Le Combe under braking there. Right back together. One, two, three. And Stella Motorsport Audi suddenly looks like it's in trouble with the lead. Nearly a second in front at the line. Barely a car length covering the three of them. So Andrew Bentley going to have to watch his P's and Q's. The two cars behind are both eager to overtake, not just each other. They both want to lead in GT3. Pit stop for the Iron Dames. Jim driver Celia Martin handing over to her Swiss teammate Karen Gaillard. Well, they were in third place coming in, but Celia Martin had a little half spin at the bus stop just before the end of her stint. So that has left them with a bit more work to do. Nevertheless, Iron Dames looking strong at the moment. On target for their second podium of the season. They finished second in round two at Le Castellet, but had a bit of a disaster at Le Mans. Driver change for number 10, Racing Spirit of Le Mans. Christophe Lapierre handing over to Marius Fossard. These guys aiming for their first podium of the season. On the right-hand side of the picture is James Walker. Nico Menzel in the high-class racing Porsche just squeezes by the man from Jersey. James Walker in his first competitive outing in a race car for nearly 10 seasons. And here for the first time in Spa Track, he's always loved, really enjoying being back behind the wheel. Now he's under pressure from James Hart and the Herbert Motorsport Porsche. They, of course, are one, two at the moment. The Iron Dames still in third. This is the battle now for fifth place with the Stella Audi. 
And right behind them, coming through, is the M Racing car that's led since the beginning of the race. And that's just going to break up the battle a little. The Herbert Porsche delayed a fraction. Up to the bus stop, James Walker in the Stellar Audi held offline this time as an LMP3 car comes through and the Herbert Porsche is right with him. Now here's an opportunity perhaps as they come out of the bus stop and head down to the hairpin at La Source. James may be a little race rusty but he hasn't forgot the techniques you need to attack and defend on the inside. Makes the Porsche take the long way round, offers him the kerb. Hangs on to the position, still in the top five. Battle for 10th place in LMP3, Colin Noble in the white and blue Team Thor machine that was off at the first corner. Maximus Meyer for MV2S, defending hard at the bus stop, but as he caused himself a little bit of an issue, looks like Colin Noble was cleaner coming through there. Two wheels on the white line, down the inside, and through he goes, up to Dent Spot. Drive through announced for Car 10 Racing Spirit of Le Mans for a starting grid infringement. That's bad news for them. Oh, trouble at Lake Home and a big hit for high class racing. That's Tommy Foster. Did he misjudge the distance to that Porsche? That was the Proton Huber car of Manuel Lauk. Looks like he just tried to cut in in front. Here's our battle for second place. Marius Fossar attacking Alex Cuno as they climb the hill at high speed up towards the bus stop. Cuno on the inside. Fossar goes outside. Cuno relaxes his defenses. Fossar goes in very, very deep. Just makes it through. Proper block pass. And so up into second, Marius Fossar. Well, Agzaj Kuno won't want to take that lying down. Already trying to see if he can find a way to respond. There's Tommy Foster. So the good news is he is okay. Safety car in this lap. Safety car in this lap. Reminder, no overtake before the line. It's a five cars length maximum, ladies and gentlemen. Five cars length maximum. Green light, green flag, green flag. No overtake before the line. Here we go then, back to green flag racing. 21 minutes, 21 seconds. Samia Ben leads for Hagley by T2 Racing. Marius Fossar, car number 10. Racing Spirit Elemon giving chase. Then M Racing, car number 13, right there in third place. Then the Iron Dames Lamborghini. And the rest of the field fairly spread out. Pressure again for James Walker in the Stella Motorsport Audi. Down the hill they stream. Everybody bunched together, but the Team Thor car has had to head for the pit lane. That's not great news. They were off on the very first corner, and now they are out with only 20 minutes remaining. Here's the challenge for the lead then. Racing Spirit of Le Mans looking to move in front here in the closing stages at Spa, and through he goes. Marius Fossar has the lead of the race, right behind Samir Ben in the yellow car, and there is Alexandre Cuneau. That is your podium right now. It could all change very easily, but these three are clear. Trouble at Lecom, GG Classics, Fraser Ross getting clouted by William Gosselin in the CD Sport car. Great pace, the car was really good today. I felt like there's a podium definitely on the cards, but um, over, I think we had a cracked radiator. Um, so when it, we cool, when it overheated slightly during the safety car, it's, the cracks come and the, all the water's come out of the car. So yeah, engine had no power, so we had to box. And that's absolutely gutting. We know how well you were running. Uh, what can we take from this weekend into the next one in Magellan? Uh, I suppose we we're both very quick all weekend and we're at the top of the time charts and yeah, I guess if it all went to plan we could be right at the front. Tough break for Team Thor and the safety car is out again. Samir Ben being chased by Alex Cuneo, that's the top two at the moment and there's trouble. Karen Gaia in the Iron Dames Lamborghini in the gravel. Vlasislav Gutak for MV2S at the side of the track as well. 
Looks like he made contact with Nico Menzel's high-class racing Porsche. The Iron Dames Lamborghini shot straight through. And then look at this, smoky retirement. Goodness me. Well, that looks like it is probably a burst radiator losing all the fluid after that contact. Safety car in this lap, no overtake before the line. This will be barely a lap left. There's the 51A, of course, a Ferrari. That's now the GT3 leader. Here we go then. About three minutes remaining as they get to the line. Hagley by T2, the bright yellow car. M Racing, ANS Motorsport, more Motorsport, Team Virage, Breton Racing. They're all in a long line. We go green inside three minutes this lap and one more as long as nobody falls off and causes another safety car oh no a spinner in la source paul trajani ans motorsport out of third well he was obviously really trying to get onto the tail of the lead pair so it is samir ben who leads but alex cuno he's got the run here Fantastic effort from Cudio in the M Racing car. Can he pull it off? He's alongside. There's a tiny overlap. Samir Ben in the yellow car is going to stick to his guns and hold on to the lead at Le Combe. That's the first strike for Samir Ben. Alexandre Cuneau in second place. More motorsport now up to third, looking for their first podium. But no drama. 37 seconds stop and go for the race leader. Well, that will be added, I'm sure, to the time at the end of the race. There's just no point in trying to serve it now. And that's James Walker off in the gravel. Sebastian Gravelund of Inter Europol. Huge drama all round. And here is the car that was the leader, but it should be M Racing to take this. They must complete the lap. There will be one more to go in MV2S. A spin. Disaster for Maximus Meyer. And that is Fraser Ross in the GG Classics car. Hagley by 2T, still battling for position with M Racing. Alex Kuno trying to get by Samir Ben. He does not need to with the penalty that will be handed to the 67 car. Have the team told him? Have they told Alex Kuno? And they are looking potentially at a first win, but the more motorsport car, Max van der Snell is right behind. Hagley by T2, the first car in a queue, will not win the race. So it'll be M Racing, more motorsport or Breton, or possibly cool, depending on how this ends at the end of this dramatic race. Is there any more drama on the final lap? Hagley by 2 tier, Samir Ben the leader. But look at this, Alice Kuno going for the inside in a dive bomb for third as well. Breton going by more motorsport and Alex Kuno tagging the back of the T2 racing car. He rushes to the line. It is the first win of the season for M Racing. A dramatic finish and in GT3 it's going to be super close as well. There's 51, Alessandro Baltzan. A, of course, the car's first and second. It's win number three of the year for the 51 Ferrari. What a race. M Racing, the victors from Breton and Cool Racing as more motorsport got shuffled down to fourth. In GT3, a 1-2 for AF Corsa, 13th and 14th overall. Kessel making it all Ferrari podium. And as ever, high drama here at Spa-Francorchamps, a track that never fails to produce the goods. Post-race, however, M Racing were given a five-second penalty for tagging Hagley by T2, which dropped them to seventh. So Breton are classified as the winners. Cool Racing in second. More Motorsport do get their first podium in third, but M Racing have lodged an appeal. So for now, the results of the Spa race remain provisional until that appeal has been heard. But at the moment, Cool Racing lead the points from RHGP and High Class are in third. And the 51A, of course, a car that was first in GT3 picked up a 30 second time penalty for exceeding track limits. So their sister car, the 88, was declared the winner. Alessandro Baltzan and Matthew Kuritsetsky demoted to second. The championship then means that AF Corsa's 51 cars still lead with the 88 car in second and Kessel Racing lie third.
It's goodbye from Bibendum and goodbye from Spa. Next time out at the end of September, we'll be racing in Italy and we visit Mugello for the very first time.